Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome to the second day of the Grand Final. I show you already two games um, of the first day of the Grand Final where actually Magnus Carlsen won one of the games, Wesley saw another game. Uh, all of the games in the first day were won by white pieces. So that was very, very interesting. And already in the second day, Magnus Carlsen won with the black pieces and now very difficult situation for Wesley So uh, Wesley is going to play as black and I want to show you this game from the black's perspective for some very important reason because I'm gonna show you the same opening so Wesley so decided to play the same opening uh, where he actually played in the first day as well and he lost that with the black pieces so very brave so definitely he prepared something but also Magnus Carlsen uh, was also prepared he had the time to prepare also uh, he predicted that uh, Wesley So is going to um, to go for that opening again and maybe he prepared something. So who's gonna prepare the first? Uh, then gonna have, of course, some initiative. Uh, we have the same uh, moves order. So we have d4, knight f6, c4, e6, knight f3, d5, queen's gambit declined. We have knight c3 and now c5. So semi Tarash defense, uh, C takes on D5, and now again, not the main line with the knight D5, but rather C takes on D4. So exactly the same line. Uh, we have queen D4, uh, E takes on D5 for very short moment. Black gonna have this isolated queen spawn, but now immediately a Magnus strikes on E4. We have D takes on E4, exchanging the queens. Uh, and now knight G5, attacking the F7, also attacking the, the pawn on E4 twice. Bishop E6, and now exchanging the knights for this bishop. So uh, we have F takes on E6, and now again, Magnus didn't go for the main line uh, but again for his favorite bishop c4 and now the king is actually forced to go to e7 and block the bishop so this is what happened Magnus castle we have knight b to d7 and here in the first game where Magnus won, we had the bishop e3. Uh, so he wanted to improve the position and he played rook d1. Now, what is the idea? The idea is very, very simple because now what um, black want to do is move the king to f7, make a space for the bishop. But there is one huge problem here. Knight d4 attacking this knight. And now if the knight takes the knight, we're gonna have this attack and white is uh, winning in this position very active and uh, black gonna have this ugly pawn uh, on e6 very huge weakness so of course wesley so didn't go for that didn't go for king f7 he found another way and he immediately played rook c8 showing Magnus that he is actually very, very well prepared. So the bishop is under attack and Magnus could go for bishop f1, probably slightly better move, but he went for bishop e2. Maybe he wanted to take under control also g4 square if in the future uh, black would love to, for example, jump to the, to the g4 and maybe prepare e3. Uh, maybe that could be unpleasant, but uh, it's unlikely. Uh, but we have bishop e2. Uh, we have also a6 and this move was very very strange uh, and nobody could understand what is going on because Wesley so just wasting the time for the a6 move so uh, why to play that Magnus Carlsen went immediately for bishop e3 so he is controlling the dark squares now uh, black definitely weakened the, the pawn structures but now we have rook c6 and now is not everything clear yet however now the rook cannot be attacked this way for example so this this a6 move was very very important we have rook a to c1 and now king d8 so now all the mystery is solved because the king is not going to f7 because of this tactic and attack on the uh, on the knight on the d7 but rather king d8 now what is the idea the idea is bring the bishop to the game to the d6 so this is the rook which is helping with that and then bring the king back to e7 shocking this is shocking now what to play as white the engine suggests couple of moves like bishop g5 bishop g4 probably the most promising would be f3 and now 
If e takes on f3, then of course white gonna have this beautiful pair of bishops. Very comfortable game, very nice. Uh, but probably what black would do is uh, something like bishop c5. Uh, going to this diagonal, white would not have much choices here. Uh, bishop c5, rook c5, and now just exchanging everything. Knight e4, knight e4, f takes on e4. And after exchanging the rooks as well, the position is completely dry. The pawn structure is symmetrical, very difficult to actually win. Uh, also, black have another uh, open file, f file, uh, where black can operate. So that probably would be the, the draw. Magnus didn't want to the draw. He played bishop d4. I'm not really understanding this move. Uh, maybe to take under control e5. Maybe Magnus uh, told that in the future this knight gonna gonna jump to e5. But I'm not really, really sure because for now uh, the, the rook, of course, in, is um, on the d file. Uh, and we have bishop Bishop d6 by Wesley so as planned. Uh, and here we have knight a4 actually uh, moving the knight and trying to exchange the knight uh, for the bishop. Now it's a very very risky idea. So first we have rook c1, rook c1, king e7. So this king makes all the moves. So for first uh, to the d8, then to the e7, then go back to the d8 and now again to e7. And this is the, the square for the king for now. And now we have g3. So Magnus wants actually to attack this pawn on the on the e4 this way but in, you know it's very very difficult now so he changed the plans he changed the structure uh, and now he has to find the way how to actually win these pawns uh, we have rook d8 here wesley spent quite a lot of time and he made like a pretty obvious move move the rook to the to the open file so nothing fancy here we have bishop e3 and now finally knight d5 so the knight starts to move attacking already the bishop so Magnus wants to preserve the bishops, pair of bishops. This is his, his asset. We have bishop g5 and now another knight just lands on f6. Uh, and now what to play? Bishop f1, that would be probably too slow because of h6 and you have to move this bishop somewhere. You don't have many squares, only actually to the, to the d2. Uh, but then knight b4 attacking this pawn, you have to do something. a3, knight d3 and this knight is really, really well placed. So bishop d3 exchanging, what to do next? This knight would be very annoying. Uh, and now what black can do is bring this, this pawn to the the e4 of course uh, white can play something like like f4 but still it's a really really comfortable position for to play for black so magnus definitely didn't like this idea this is why he jumped with the knight to c5 now attacking the pawn and defender is pinned and also attacking the b7 uh, and then this this would be very nasty fork so uh wesley so doesn't have much choice we have bishop c5 and now rook c5 making also a special uh, for the bishop we have h6 now the bishop can retreat uh, back to the c1 and now knight before attacking the pawn on the a2 uh, we have rook c7 first uh, and then after rook d7 rook d7 king d7 look at this we have two bishops against two knights would you like to play with the white pieces or with the black pieces with the pair of bishops or pair of knights very important question because this is already not good for Magnus Carlsen. Uh, we have now bishop d2 attacking the knight and now if the knight can take on a2 or not. Uh, actually can but the game would be extremely uh, complicated and Wesley so already have couple of minutes on the, on the clock. If knight a2 is played then after bishop c4 the knight is trapped. However black would have very beautiful e3 move. And now if the bishop takes, then of course the knight gonna escape through b4. And if the pawn, this is a little bit more complicated, but still knight d4 first attacking the bishop. So bishop e1 uh, and now knight c1. So the knight can escape, but not really because a lot of squares are still controlled by the bishop. So for example, king g2 now trying to get to that pawn because look at this, this knight actually controls d2. So the bishop cannot come and attack the, the knight on the, 
uh, on the c1 very tricky position now b5 and this bishop has to be moved cannot stay here anymore so if bishop uh, f1 this knight finally can escape very complicated situation of course wesley so didn't want to go for that uh, and we have knight f to d5 just simply defend the knight we have a3 now kicking the knight knight d3 as planned so this is very beautiful and of course a bishop d3 would not really work i will show you now what would happen so for example f4 so this pawn cannot really support uh but then the the king can support so king d6 king f2 uh, and now king c5 and the king gonna come uh maybe even win the pawn probably b3 uh, then king d4 and now um king f3 and g5 and black uh, is winning here now whatever white do if if takes then of course uh, we're gonna have the support for this pawn and um, even if losing the the pawn doesn't really matter because now this pawn gonna be extremely fast so for example h4 trying to also be fast but look at this pawn e4 king f2 and now we have e3 and so on and these pawns are already ready uh, and also the knight gonna gonna support this way this way it's impossible actually for white to stand this is completely winning and if after g5 is it's this is not taken and playing something slower like h3 g takes on f4 g takes on f4 still this pawn cannot go uh but then the knight can do some maneuvers and this is this would be uh really really complicated knight c7 uh, first making some attacks on this pair of pawns and these pawns have to move on some uh, moments so for example um, a4 and then knight d5 and going after this pawn uh it's gonna take a lot of time but for example knight f6 a uh, bishop d2 i'm just showing showing you you know waiting moves probably white could have something uh better but if moving the pawns is also not that easy uh knight d7 uh before now then the knight cannot jump but now the knight can go this way and after a5 the knight c4 now the bishop is under attack and if bishop e1 then we're gonna have d2 uh, and of course winning the game so this way or another bishop d3 is just not that great and vladimir kramnik said actually in the studio that against pair of bishops the best to play with the pair of knights so if there is the pair of knights this is uh very very dangerous and very often pair of knights doing really great because especially if the knights are in the center and control a lot of squares not only the squares which they uh, really control but they also control a lot of squares by tactics because they can unexpectedly jump somewhere and win some piece so very dangerous and sneaky pieces uh, now we have b3 so the pawn was under attack so we have b3 and now wesley so just go with the with the king so we have king d6 we have f3 but now it's too late with that move uh we have knight c5 now going after the the pawn we have f takes on e4 and a bit of complications here uh however knight b3 is also winning but it's not that clear because after knight b3 the bishop is under attack bishop e1 uh, and then knight d4 going after this bishop uh, e takes on d5 let's say knight e2 with the check um then knight c1 d e6 now knight d3 uh yeah and th this is also winning because at the end of the day uh we're gonna have these two pawns against this one pawn uh creating the 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 passer uh, and then that gonna work as a as a bite and uh, the king will have to go and white uh, and black gonna win the game but i show you yesterday also the game where it could not be possible but in this position actually uh this is you know uh winning by by black so knight b3 was also possible just a bit more complicated we have knight e4 pretty simple now attacking them the bishop so we have bishop c1 and now e5 just pushing the pawn pretty simple we have b4 now knight e to c3 attacking another bishop so bishop has to be moved and as you see the bishops have to be extremely careful now uh, and where to move and there is not much counterplay but because what white can do the only way where white could have some counterplay is this one but for now the king is uh, very close so there is no problem the king always can jump to c7 
7. Uh, we have e4, so now this pawn uh, gonna run and will need the support of the king. Uh, and now we have king f2. We have also king e5. We have bishop h3 now, so Magnus uh, tries to actually activate his bishop. We have b6, so if the bishop comes to c8, we're gonna have a5, no problem. We have bishop b2, now going after the, the knight. Uh, and now we have king d4. So king d3 is coming, and now if bishop c8, that would be too slow to actually take on a6, because now king d3, uh, bishop a6, yes, winning the pawn, but king d2 uh, gonna support this pawn and win the game. Not much can be done, this bishop is completely unuseful, probably exchange, um, and then this pawn gonna come to b5, so uh, bishop c4, and then e3 is winning the game, and you cannot do anything. Uh, this of course is completely winning, uh, black gonna have extra knight and win the game. So that is not possible, this is why Magnus Carlsen went back, bishop f1, he want to control all of the squares in the front of the, uh, of the king and of the pawn, we have b5 now, blocking the position on the of the pawns on the queen side, uh, and now we have king e1, staying in the front of the pawns. Uh, and now there is the very simple uh, winning move for black, however Wesley so didn't find it. He didn't find it, knight e3 wins really easily, because now this bishop is under attack, so bishop have to be, cannot be exchanged, it's very important bishop controlling the light squares, so probably bishop h3, but now knight c4 attacking this bishop, bishop c1, and now e3, and this pawn gonna win the game. Uh, let's say bishop c8, and now knight a2, uh, what to do with the bishop? Uh, the bishop is actually trapped, so bishop a3, and this even if the pawn is lost, then simply knight a3, defending the pawn, and this with the extra knight, of course, is also winning. So knight e3 was winning, but we have king e3, uh, and this is a slight inaccuracy, however, Magnus Carlsen uh, played bishop c1, he didn't really have a, you know, better move, he just uh, delivered a check, so the king just retreat, and now everything is fine again. So we have bishop b2, and now uh, Wesley so found a way to, to win, and he just pushed the pawn on e3. And I just spotted that the, the board is misplaced, so let me just adjust that. Sorry for that. Uh, Magnus Carlsen in this position uh, played bishop a1. He doesn't he see the moves. So he played bishop a1, but there is the problem, because this knight gonna just come to b6, uh, and then gonna attack this pawn, and it cannot be defended anymore. So uh, black just gonna win these two pawns and, and win the game with these two connected pass pawns. Um, so first we have g6, taking away the f5 square from the bishop. So now Magnus knows that uh, this knight gonna win the game, so he tries to activate the bishop, but it's also um, too late. We have king d3 now, and now the king cannot be as attacked from the, from the behind, and now bishop f1 also doesn't work, because simply e2 wins the game. Uh, it's protected by the, by the knight, so there is no problem here. This is why we have bishop c8 now going after the pawn on a6, uh, and now knight b1, also attacking the pawn on a3. Uh, and now bishop a6, knight a3, of course, is possible, but then uh, this bishop can actually move, uh, let's say, to g7, but simply e2 wins the game. And now even you take bishop h6, try to control all the squares around, is not enough, because knight c2, uh, and of course, black gonna uh, promote to the queen and win the game. So we have bishop b2, another waiting move and now knight d2 so this knight gonna come for example to c4 attack the uh, the bishop attacks the pawn and uh, what to play we have bishop g4 so going to control the the light squares again but now black has another move knight c3 taking under control these two squares so uh, definitely e2 is coming and also this bishop gonna be kicked very simple h5 and the bishop has nowhere to go so this is why we have bishop takes on c3 finally uh, king c3 uh, and now king e2 going after the pawn so knight c4 now defend the pawn attack the pawn on uh, a3 and now bishop c8 so magnus tries 
nice to get some counterplay uh, and win these pawns but now simply we have knight a3 we have bishop a6 and now there is the question would you take the the pawn or would you defend this pawn in the center so uh for your information both of the moves are winning however if you go for king before it's it's very very risky because now after king e3 this king can actually go for these pawns and look at this what can happen king c3 bishop b5 otherwise this pawn gonna uh, actually win the game and the knight can always uh go to the to the c4 or c2 and this bishop if goes somewhere else uh, there cannot stop the pawn anymore because uh, the knight gonna block that so bishop b5 immediately and after knight b5 uh, king e4 and it looks like very very uh, tricky now look at this king d2 king e5 uh, king e3 and it looks like white gonna actually at least not lose the game maybe even win king f6 now g5 a uh, king g6 going after this pawn and now king f2 uh, king h6 now g4 king g5 king f3 defending and now the only way for white is exchange this pawn uh, but now after king h4 we have knight d6 and now h3 it's end the game with the knight f5 with the check and the king has to go there is nowhere to go actually uh for example king g5 g takes on h3 actually wins the game for black crazy this is crazy this win uh, this this was possible win but very very risky impossible uh, to calculate in the wesley so have uh, less than one minute already so he simply went for king d4 now defending the pawn uh, and now we have h4 so magnus attacks on the on the king side we have now knight b1 setting up the trap and now the pawn is not defended but of course it cannot be taken because otherwise uh the bishop gonna be gonna be taken and uh, this this would win the game so this is why we have king d1 uh, and now knight c3 with check we have king c2 and now g5 h takes on g5 h takes on g5 g4 moving the king on the on the light square so it can be defended uh, but of course these two pawns are uh, gonna win the game so we have king c4 going after this pawn this pawn cannot be defended that's the problem we have bishop c8 king before uh we have king d3 e2 now and what next king d2 we have king a3 this is the most precise move king a3 saying if you take my knight i'm gonna promote to the queen uh, and uh, magnus didn't do that so magnus played bishop f5 and now simply b4 we have bishop d3 maybe going after that pawn uh but after b3 magnus carlsen resign and he resigned because uh, if he exchanged then black of course gonna gonna promote and if not if he stays uh, still on this diagonal then we're gonna have very simple b2 uh then let's say bishop d3 then king a2 and and yeah that's all uh white can deliver one check uh but at the end of the day black gonna promote and after exchange there is no way then black also gonna promote and and win the game so for example king c3 there is promotion and if king uh e1 then of course we're gonna have king c1 and there is only one move here and black gonna promote also and win the game so after b3 magnus carlsen resign then we have another game where magnus carlsen went for karo khan he won the first game with the karo khan uh, and and it was shocking game magnus carlsen at uh, first uh, wesley so had a better position and he had the winning chances then magnus carlsen missed the fork uh, on the queen and the rook so that was pretty shocking as well uh, and then after a couple of moves actually players agree for a draw and then in the fourth game they they were so disgusted that they just draw very fast we had the break uh, and then wesley so actually won one of the games and another was a draw and this way wesley so became the winner and he won thirty thousand dollars as the first prize um, of the skilling open tournament so 
that wasn't the best gift for Magnus Carlsen, but he said, of course, that, you know, this is chess, sometimes that happens and uh, not the best gift for his birthday. Uh, but overall, he was very happy of the tournament and uh, maybe not on his performance, but um, definitely very nice tournament. So, um, yeah, if you like this video, press like. If for some reason you don't like it, press unlike. And if you don't want to miss another videos on my channel, press subscribe, smash the bell button. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.